Hello again, lovely people, and welcome back to the channel. This is the Nova Project. Um, this is the second of four videos in the Nova SN3 build series. So if you haven't watched the series intro yet, uh, click the card above and check that out. In this video, I will go over the first steps to starting your own Nova SM3 build, including the project resources, a full 3D printed parts list review, uh, servo motor preparation, and finally the full mechanical assembly. In kind of instruction format, but I obviously won't be disassembling Nova to do that. So let's dive right in with a look at all of the resources that are available for the project. Novaspotmicro.com is probably the best place for resources. I link everything from here, so if you keep this site loaded up, you should be able to follow along. I will be updating the build pages after I'm done with this series of videos, because again, a lot has changed, a lot has been updated. Uh, the file parts lists have already been updated, so yeah, keep tuned on this website, bookmark it, maybe even join, and, and then you'll get notifications with any update posts I make, and all your links to GitHub and YouTube channels and Discord server and such is all right here as well. Okay, and then speaking of GitHub, I'm also going to update this. There has been some concern and some question of why I didn't actually use versioning. And really the short answer is I wanted to keep around code in conjunction with hardware changes so that if somebody, you know, doesn't want to go the whole teensy route and two microcontrollers and all the fun stuff we're doing currently with the new remote and such, they can go all the way back to the mega version if they want. So I, I just left all this here. And again, if, if somebody was building along and got sick of all my changes and updates and wanted to stick with nano version four, they could. But I will clean all of this up. I'm, I'm gonna dump all of the older stuff into a Nova SM3 archive. And then just this Nova SM3 project will just be the latest version, which will most likely be 5.3 as the final version. Okay, then of course you have the YouTube channel, which you're all familiar with. You're pretty much on there right now. Like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, please and thank you. And then finally, we have the Discord server, which is a great resource, guys, especially if you have any little issues or bugs or you can't get something wired correctly or code's not working or what have you. It's a great resource. There's a lot of people who help out, a lot of people who've had a lot of issues and we've solved them along the way so definitely pop in here and join us and we have over 400 subscribers so there's plenty of people to offer advice and help out so all of these resources are always linked in the description of all of my youtube videos and like i said after the this series of videos is complete i will go back and have them all updated and coincide with the latest videos the most time consuming and often tedious part of any project like this is the 3D printing. Uh, if you have experience with 3D printing, you know what I'm talking about. I estimate the total hours for this project, as far as printing goes, around 100 hours. Uh, for most parts, high resolution settings are encouraged. And from my recollection, I use something like three outer perimeters, 60 to 80% infill and 0.14 layer height for most of the parts, and almost all of them also require supports. Uh, pay close attention to print orientation on the bed of your printer because it can definitely affect the strength of the final parts. Again, this isn't a 3D printing video, so there are plenty of resources out there. Filament type is your choice, and it may not be a bad idea to use PETG for some of the framework, which is a much sturdier, durable uh, plastic, and I used it for some of the leg parts. Otherwise, regular PLA, PLA plus would be fine. Um, and then TPU or other flexible filament should be used for the feet to help absorb impact and shock, shock but that's also not completely necessary. All right, so let's take a look at the mechanical parts required for the project, which includes the servo motors and the hardware. And then I'll review all of the 3D printed parts in after that. So these servo motors are the most expensive part of the project. However, they're also the most important part of the project. Uh, Nova requires 12 servo motors with, in my opinion, the minimum specs of 20K servos, which I have here, 
25K are probably preferred. Uh, they should have 180 degrees of rotation, 270 degrees preferred, and always Metal Geo servos. Um, I've seen other projects that use lesser servos, like the MG996 servos, but they just don't have the strength or fluidity in the movement that you'll need to move around a nearly seven pound robot, in my opinion. And in fact, after a year of development and trying to work on her walking gates lately, I went ahead and upgraded four of her servos and made the investment to get 35 kilogram servos. And it's made quite a difference. It would be expensive to do all 12 with those, but it goes by your budget. Uh, the next thing you'll need is 12 metal servo horns. I went with the metal ones because the plastic ones that come with your servos are junk in my opinion. Uh, they're pretty much useless for any project that requires tight tolerance or accurate movement. Again, my opinion only. And then the last thing you'll need are 8 to 12 of these F688 bearings. Um, depending on what shoulder you need, you'll need four or more or not. And then a handful of three, four, five millimeter screws and nuts. Okay, and then I also suggest some blue Loctite for the motor connections, which I'll talk about later. Yes, I found this project originally on Thingiverse. A lot of changes have been made to the design of it and the parts. A lot of parts were added and uh, strengthened up at certain points where I noticed there was uh, weak, weak points. Uh, with a big thanks to the online community, especially shout out to Jordan. The 3D models have been moved from Tinkercad into Fusion 360, and it's all well organized and easy to follow the complete assembly of Nova. So let's take a look at the model and go over all the parts you'll be printing for the project and how they go together. So the first set that we have are all the cover pieces, which in the case of our model here, they're all in yellow. So the bottom front is here. The bottom hatch is a little tricky to see and get to because it actually sits in the stand, but there's the hatch. And then the bottom rear is here. Okay, then we have the head panel, and then the head panel slug, and then we have the left femur, right femur covers, and then the rear panel, the base and the shell. So this is the shell, and then the base holds all of the components. Attached on the back side, there's a piece that holds all of these buttons in place which is the rear panel button holder. And then we have the top front and then top rear. So those are the covers. Then we have the foot piece, which should be printed out of TPU. Okay, and next we have the frame pieces, which in the case of the model here are all black. So the first is the chassis itself. This used to be multiple pieces in previous designs. Now it's a one-piece design with braces to help structurally make Nova's body more stiff. Okay, then we have the front inner shoulder. Then we have the front shoulder middle. And then we have the front shoulder outer. Then we have the left coax. And when, I, when we talk about left and right, we're referring to Nova's left. So here's the left coax, and then her left femur, and then the left tibia. Okay, and then for the rear, we have the rear shoulder inner, rear shoulder middle, and then the rear shoulder outer. Pay close attention when you're assembling these two shoulder assemblies. While the parts have the same names, the inner, the middle piece, in the case of the rear, is the plate. And in the case of the front, the outer piece is the plate. And when I say plate, I mean the piece that holds the servo horn, and screwed on. So pay close attention in assembling those that you don't mix that up. 
Okay, and then we have the right coax, femur, and tibia. Then the ultrasonic plate, we can kind of see that in here, inside the head. If I turn all the parts back on, we should be able to see it. So there's the ultrasonic plate. There are two of those. So here is the front PIR mount, and then the rear PIR mount, and then these are the PIR cups or deflectors. And then in here we have the MP3 speaker mount. There are a few optional parts. Uh, the emblem I've, I've called optional. There's a calibration tool to help you with aligning the legs. Uh, there's a little cage that goes around the butt converter underneath to protect it from the battery. And then the stand base cone and, and cap are all optional. You can create your own stand if you like or use this stand. Okay, all of the basics of cleaning your 3D parts apply here tremendously. Especially wherever the motors seat on a part, you have to make sure that that's a nice and very flat and smooth surface. Uh, sanding and filing is often not necessary. Just be sure that your motors seat properly and your bearings and, and servo horns as well to get the best assembly you, you can get. Uh, in many places on the parts, embedded nuts are used with the printed parts. They posed to be a challenge in some cases. It was probably a bad design choice, but it was in the original parts and I never changed it. You could go with uh, threaded inserts. However, you'd have to update the models to do that. And in my experience with embedded nuts though, the problem can come in disassembly. If, if either an embedded nut or a threaded insert becomes loose and loses its grip, it often requires destructive process to disassemble. So be that as it may, as they say. <laughs> okay, so before attaching the servos to their 3D parts and before any assembly, the very first thing you need to do is home your servos. Most will already be homed out of the box, but it'd be a bad idea to expect that and not confirm before assembly. Um, all servos have a home position, which is the zero position, and they can move in a negative or positive amount of degrees from there. So you absolutely have to make sure the home is set, which is really more or less the middle of, of its movement. Okay? Uh, it could cause many issues if you don't, and sometimes fatal to your parts or your motors. So I can't stress enough that it's imperative that the servos are homed before starting the assembly. So in my case, I have this dedicated servo tester, which lets you connect up to six servos at once. It has buttons to home it, and then it has potentiometers to move to test the servo itself. So if you can pick up one of those for a few dollars, or an alternative easy solution is to just use any old Arduino and a little bit of simple code that you can find on Google with a simple homing servos Arduino code search and you'll be able to home your servos quite easily. Okay, so after you have cleaned up all of your 3D printed parts and homed your servos, the next step would be to insert all of the hardware, your embedded nuts, the bearings seated in each of their respective spots, and then the servo horns also seated. Uh, some of these operations may need a hot soldering iron to help seat them a little bit. And the embedded nuts can be a little tricky without practice, but once you get the hang of it, it's not so bad. So why don't we move Nova over here so that we can start the assembly procedures. Um, most of the parts are marked for orientation, so pay close attention to that and be sure to use the Fusion 360 model viewer on Nova's website to help you identify and assemble the parts as needed. Uh, to start the assembly of Nova, you'll first attach the frame's front shoulder inner part and the rear shoulder inner part to the chassis trunk. The remaining parts of the frame will be assembled along with the leg assemblies. So let's take a closer look at how the frame parts go together in the 3D model. Here is the order of operation as far as assembly goes. So you start with the chassis. Front and back doesn't matter, but we're going to do the front here first. So we put the inner shoulder on first so that you can access the screws more easily, which is part of the extension that I've made 
modifications to this project. Then we'll have the middle shoulder, which has the seats for the bearings for the motors in it, again, so that we can access the screws. Then you'll put your leg assembly motors with their bearings seated properly, and then you'll put the outer piece on, which has the servo horns and the screws, and that ties it all together tightly. Okay, and then the rear is the same except for the plate here is actually the middle piece, you'll see. So first we have the inner shoulder. Again, we attach that to the chassis first for easier access to the screws. And then we'll have the plate here in this case for the middle, middle piece, which again has the servo horns. And then the, put your legs onto the servo horns, the motors, attach them this time instead of just seating the bearings. And then the end plate in this case has the bearings on it. So it's a little easier to assemble. So in the first part of the leg assembly would be to attach the foot to the tibia. And because it's TPU, it's flexible and it has little pins on here that fit right into little sockets on the feet. And you may have to stretch it a little bit to get it in there because it fits on nice and snug, okay? Then we can mount our three servos to our three leg pieces that accept the servos. Quite simple, quite straightforward. And in the end, after assembly, we'll adjust the length of the wires accordingly, longer or shorter to suit. Assembly of the leg parts can be a little cumbersome and requires proper alignment initially in, in the order of assembly of the parts, especially the tibia and its cover and the fibia connections can be a little confusing. So I refer you to a video linked above where I build a leg step-by-step step in greater detail and much easier to understand. And if you're using one of the optional shoulder designs for Nova, uh, those would be assembled after you've finished the leg assembly. And if you chose the shoulder that I designed, then there's another link to another video above demonstrating in detail how this assembly is installed. With the leg assemblies complete, they can then be attached to the, their servo horns on the front shoulder outer plate and the rear shoulder middle plate respectively. Uh, remembering to ensure the correct alignment again, which I described in the previous videos, which you definitely should take a look at. And then the final step of the frame and leg assembly requires inserting each pair of legs into their respective bearings along with its outer plate all kind of in one motion. So it can be a little tricky, but you'll see exactly what I mean when you go to do it. And then last but not least, and the easiest in all cases is to attach the final cover parts to Nova, which assemble pretty much pressed on with just screws in the top and the bottom. And that gets her ready for her new heart and her new brain, which is coming really soon in the next video, guys, in the series. So, as always, thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe. And take very good care of each other. And I will see you next time.